Hello, beautiful ones, the Army of Light Earth Division, the boots on the ground. Sean L. Francis here. Today is August 22nd, 2023. Thanks so much for being here with me. This is the weekly briefing. <laughs> oh, things are good, team. How are you doing? How is everybody? What's the energy like out there? Please chime in and let us all know how you're doing. I've been pretty heads down the last few days. I'm in my second week of channeling this new book for Melchizedek. And then today, it's going to be a fairly short video. I do have a nice message from Melchizedek for all of you, for humanity, um, kind of the current state of affairs, and uh, some just really nice, beautiful, heartwarming messages that only they can do from their place. Um, so it's really quite an honor, I, I will tell you. Um, I'm <laughs> my fears of failure, my fear, you know, this fear of failure that this thing that I have, you know, definitely rearing its head with the channeling of this book. Um, as you all know, I'm a huge fan of Paul Selig. Melchizedek have channeled um, 10 books with Paul. The 10th one's not released yet, but the last one, Resurrection. I've listened to it four times on Audible, and every time I felt like I got new stuff out of it. Um, so, you know, and he's a double master's degree, taught drama. Um, I'm not going to get that right. But, you know, he's got an academic background and is very well spoken. And, you know, and I've got this book coming out. It's very different, you know. Um, and it's going to be focused on the negative reptilian regime and the subjugation of humanity. And, you know, 12 or so days into this channeling, we're really still just setting the stage just within the last two days or so have they really started to dig into the negative reptilian aspect of it. And, and you know, we're starting at the beginning with Lemuria. Um, and I had channeled that before last year. I think it was September or so, October, where um, Melchizedek had come through and given a really good overview of kind of more the ancient origins of the negative reptilian influence here on the planet um and i just i'm also just getting a sense for just how big the story is how complex it is all the moving pieces and parts and how do we cover all of this how do we present this in a way that is going to resonate as truth um i mean if it does it does if it doesn't it doesn't you know this book will certainly not be for everybody um, who may come across it um, we we're definitely um, pushing the envelope here. A lot of this information's already been out. A lot of books have been written about the negative reptilians, um, but this will be channeled material from Melchizedek, um, highly evolved priesthood of beings who know what they're talking about. So I wanna get every word right. <laughs> I wanna get the energetic frequencies right. Um, and I wanna do a really good job, you know, you know, really making sure that I capture everything that they want to say and all the frequencies, like I said. So it's been a bit nerve wracking, um, just to be honest, um, always an honor and it's so special and that there's just nothing else I'd rather be doing. But it's it's definitely a thing that I'm, <laughs> I'm getting used to this and just really um, relaxing into it, taking it one day at a time and not getting too too worked up about it. But um, so that's where I'm at today with the book. I'm not going to go into any of the book excerpts today because frankly, I'm just not ready. I um, recorded a bunch of stuff, but haven't had time to sit down and really clean up those, those transcripts yet. Um, what else is going on here? I have been so tired the last, I'd say 48 hours or so, really, really tired. Um, I am trying to get up before dawn to do this channeling, but I'm going to bed early also, but I'm still adjusting to the schedule. So I don't know if it's just me or if all of you are feeling this too, but really tired the last couple of days. Um, otherwise, you know, things are just kind of flowing. I'm just kind of stepping into a groove here and it feels nice. You know, everything's going well, things are good. All right, so I wanted to get into what Melchizedek had to say today. Um, and I did talk to them about the book. And so I'll tell you what they told me about, you know, my insecurities around this. <laughs> and I asked about the GFL and the war. And then they kind of ended with um, just some information for all of you. Okay. Sorry for the airplane noise. I've got my 
door open behind me here. <clears throat> so they said, Shauna, the book is going well. Please do not fret or have anxiety over the flow of the book, the cadence, how much we're getting done each day, the questions that you have that arise as you are channeling the book. Yeah, so that's another thing. <clears throat> Just, you know, when something comes up that I've channeled before in the back of my mind, I'm like, is, does this match what they said before? Am I getting this right? <clears throat> they said here, we have everything fully under control, dear one, and it's going well. It will continue to get better and better as time goes by and you become more comfortable with the material. <laughs> said, thank you for that, team. Thank you. Um, they said, that being said, we're looking forward to starting again with you bright and early in the morning if you are able. All right. They said here, in terms of the video tonight, yes, we have a few things we'd like to say. The constituents, the Army of Light Earth Division, continue to make great strides, Shauna, in terms of feeling much more comfortable in this, in this new space acclimating nicely to the new pace of this space, being more at ease with being at ease. Does that all make sense to all of you? Does that resonate? You're feeling more comfortable in this new space. You're acclimating to the pace of where we're at right now. Remember, uh, Ashtar had talked about the quickening and, okay, guys, buckle up. We are, we're, we're doing a bit of a, we're speeding this thing up a bit. Um, vibration is going to be higher. So hopefully you can ride these waves. If, if not, that's fine. But if you can, great. Um, being more at ease with being at ease. And yeah, I remember, you know, those first hundred days with the Galactic Federation of Light where they're saying, you know, don't apologize for being, for feeling good. Don't apologize for smiling. You know, don't apologize for beaming your light. You know, um, I think especially during COVID and the lockdowns, and there was a lot of suffering, a lot of suffering going on. And <clears throat> you know, the, the idea here, um, especially when you've got a lot of people around you who may be suffering or ill at ease, you know, to come in and be full of light and full of love and um, enjoy. Sometimes that doesn't feel right. You know, sometimes we feel ashamed of that or feel guilty about that. But, um, you know, from what they're saying here, we're feeling more at ease with being at ease. Um, and I think also some of us have just We've grown ac accustomed to drama in our world, accustomed to strife, ac accustomed to being a victim, accustomed uh, to feeling lack. Um, you know, and all these things, these are all part of the illusion. We're rising above and beyond these things. We're getting out of the old paradigms that we've been used to, stepping more fully into this new place of ease. Ease, being more at ease with being at ease. I love that. And they continue here, we feel, see, and hear more laughter, more levity, levity from the collective, more of an, ex of an acceptance of what is, and a general sense that love is a very powerful force. As we say these words, we understand that it seems obvious that this would be the case, but truly, dear ones, it is a monumental pivot for the collective to understand love in this way. Something as simple as understanding the power of love. And remember, our guides have always said, you know, this is where the true power lies. It's not in the ego and the force of will and some of these other things that the ego will use to seem powerful and in control. Truly, it's the, it's the love force. It's, it's love that's the most powerful. So we're starting to realize that we're really getting it. And they're saying that this realization is really pivotal for the human race. So again, we, we, we have our own kind of collective here that's going to help reverberate out into the larger collective. So it's like, you know, we're getting it here on this level. This will eventually follow on a larger scale. They said here, this general acceptance of love as a powerful force will have long lasting impacts on humanity as a whole as the ascension progresses. I said, okay, thank you, Melchizedek. I said, do you have any update on the galactic war and any bigger picture insights around the war, where things stand, the impacts that this fight is having? Um, 
And I said, I'm also curious about the Army of Light, the Galactic Division. Remember that we have an army at our disposal here, about a thousand strong. Well, they were all part of the Galactic Federation of Light. So I'm curious about them as well. <clears throat> and here's what they had to say. Shauna, there continues to be fighting between the Galactic Federation of Light and their constituents and the negative reptilians and their constituents. The fight have mo has moved to other sectors of the galaxy where it's having an impact on political relationships, contracts, other working relationships, and even on negotiations. So the impact is far beyond the immediate battles between these forces and is creeping more into the political aspects of galactic relationships. Yeah, so this has really become... You know, it's, it's, it's grown beyond the fight here. It's now become polit politicizing, polit political. I said here, thank you, team. I said, is there an end in sight? I said, last time you said that you thought 25% of the GFL had perished in, the, in these battles. I said, what is that update today? And they said, Shauna, we are saddened to say that the loss of life on the Galactic Federation of Light side Excuse me, and their allies is closer now to 50%. This is devastating to these forces and it will take a very long time to rebuild and refortify. We'd estimate a similar level of casualties on the negative reptilian side as well. Can you just imagine losing half your fleet in a battle? I mean, I'm sure it's happened here on Earth, but um, it's just... It's so hard to comprehend this kind of loss, that this kind of a battle is going on here at this level, at these levels. And we've talked to Melchizedek about this before. Um, they said here, this is a closely matched battle, dear ones, and the outcome is uncertain at this time. Please, to continue, please continue to check in with us. I said, thank you, team. I said... I imagine that this means the Army of Light Galactic Division is also not available and has suffered casualties. I said, is that correct? I said, yes, Shauna, this is true. I said, um, you know, would you be able to explain how this battle, how this war is impacting us here on Earth with our ascension, with our awakening, with disclosure, with the subjugation of humanity? Um, I said, especially if the negative reptilians win this war. And they said, Shauna, what we will say in this moment is the outcomes are not exactly clear as of yet. And, the, and that the impact is also not clear in this moment. Humanity continues to awaken on this journey, to this journey of ascension and to the truth of who and what they are. Off-planet forces and energies continue to support humanity in this evolution. The vibration here continues to rise, and many on the planet are, con are contributing in significant ways to help raise the vibration of this planet. All right, so he's ba they're basically saying none of this is changing. We're on this ascension pathway. Everybody who can help is helping. The energies are raising. The vibration is raising. And many people on the planet Earth are, are contributing to the raising of the vibration as well. At the, at the same time, they said, just as before, the negative reptilian regime is doing what it can to maintain a stronghold over what they feel is theirs. And they continue to ratchet up tactics, programs, and processes to maintain fear and even to increase it. All right, so that's no surprise. We've heard this before. They said here, while there has been a bit of distraction with this galactic battle, they do remain focused here on the Earth's surface with the control, the subjugation, the fear-mongering as they always have. And they said here, soon this planet will feel very much like a house divided. One side of the house hanging on to the old and the known, unaware of the ascension, unaware of the power of love, continuing to embrace division and a service to self-orientation. 
This is appropriate for many on the planet and should not be judged nor frowned upon as all choices are reflections of a soul in lesson. And also, as I read those words, I understand that it's quite a, um, you know, generalized view. You know, things are much more complex than this. Like one side's this and one side's that. We're going to have all these gradations in between um, along that spectrum of folks. But they're saying as time goes on, it's one of these things. And they've talked about this in a few other videos as well. This is kind of the trajectory here. And they continued. There will be those who choose to step out of their comfort zones of history, of what has always been into the new and unknown as pioneers and way showers, putting aside the very powerful egoic structures and embracing a path that's led more by the heart, where the power of love is seen for its truth and its transformative abilities. Those who identify more with the love vibration and the concept of unity will continue to show up in action, will continue to show up in action and behavior and words in support of this path. These actions, behaviors, and words will not be in scorn or judgment of others who think differently, but instead the approach, the approach will be gentle yet striking in its ability to help bring out the best in others and to help reflect back to others the truth of who and what they are. Yeah, Melchizedek, this has been their rallying cry from the very beginning. Um, we reflect back to people who and what they truly are. And, when, and people really feel this. And a big mantra that they're always talking about is, I know who you are in truth, I know what you are in truth, and I know how you serve in truth. And when you literally say that to another person, there's this alchemical reaction that seems to happen kind of at this energetic level. There's this recognition and a wow. And I'll tell you, you know, when I get on these one-on-one -on -one sessions and these Zoom calls and, you know, I feel like I really know you in truth. I, I see you in truth. I know who and what you are beyond the illusion, beyond history, beyond the stories, beyond the identity that you have adopted, you know, as part of your survival here on earth <laughs> you know everything we've done up to this point has served us in some capacity it just may not be apparently ob you know apparent and obvious what that is but know that the universe is conspiring for your highest good and you're here in this moment you're still here doing what you can do um embracing love the best way that you know how we're all a work in progress here we're all in lesson all right um and here they continue Having a voice, claiming your freedom and sovereignty, and having your life reflect this truth will be one of the most powerful and empowering aspects of this journey in terms of the impact to the whole. On this path, everyone moves forward, but the routes may look different. We ask that you continue to hold your torches high, your torches of light high as a beacon for others who may be seeking that light. Please do not be afraid of the people who are attracted to your light. By your presence, you set your example. Indeed, you may help them light their own torches at some point. And that is where they ended it today. All right, guys, having a voice, claiming our freedom, our sovereignty, having, the, having our lives reflect this truth will be one of the most catalyzing ways that we help others on this journey in terms of waking up, impacting the whole, raising vibration. Um, there's a lot, there's a lot to unpack here. Um, even though these messages seem, oh, yeah, we've heard all this before. And, you know, we have heard a lot of this before. I still think it's a good reminder. And uh, certainly was good for me to hear this today. And, um, you know, we're, we're moving into this where, where who we are, what we are, how we carry ourselves 
how we relate to other people, how I treat you, how you treat me, how I think about the world, how I think about other people, you know, starting to really carry ourselves as light workers, even through the, the small things, not just for big things, but, you know, every day, our thought processes how we reason things, how we think about things. So it's like blending that heart with the ego in action for the light. Um, yeah. So our guides are helping us figure out how to do this. It's not something that we always inherently know, you know, we're, we're needing to learn it. And it's a bit of stumbling around sometimes, you know, because we, we're not exactly sure what we're doing quite yet, <laughs> but we're getting there. So good progress today. Good progress. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this up for today. Let me know how you're doing. Let the whole team know how you're doing. Please write a comment. Thanks, everybody, for all the new subscribers that are here. Thanks for all your beautiful comments, all the donations that are coming in. Before we go, I did get some new merch in, and I wanted to show you guys. I've got some new Lightworker stuff that I put together. So if you'll just humor me for a moment. So this is the Racerback in black. It says Lightworker on the front. Super cute. That's in our store now. And I did do sweatshirts in white and black as well. I think I have black in there. And then I, um, I did order these track pants to see how they looked. So this says light worker on down the front of the leg. And then you've got Shauna L. Francis right here. These are pretty cool. They're nylon. So um, and then they've got like this mesh liner on the inside and zipper pockets and uh, elastic at the waist and at the, at the ankles. <laughs> anyway, this has just been too much fun. Oh, and also more coasters came in the mail. Anyway, loving the mushroom stuff. It's been so fun. Okay, team, thanks for that. Thanks for being here. I love you all so much. I hope you're doing amazing, and I'll see you all next week.